get the screen in the corner. Basically, it's left for the lobby. Alright, guys. Okay. And we're back. Okay, so. When you download, when you download Love, uh, which you can get from the website, you can go to love2d.org. Download. Uh, yes, download. <laughs> uh, I just grabbed for Windows. I grabbed the zip 32-bit version, unzipped it, and I'm operating right in that folder. Uh, <coughs> for Mac and Linux, you're on your own. Um, I have it. I have Nick's word that that was pretty easy. Um, incredibly easy. Incredibly easy. Uh, <coughs> Linux. Was Linux easy too? I installed it. It worked. Two on what version? Uh, you were? Oh, okay, great. Um, last time we tried it on Chris's, we had some issues with dependencies and whatnot. Because um, some of the libraries are not free in the Richard Stallman sense of free. So, um, <laughs> I'll have to say with 10.10, it's working like out of the box. So. Really? Seems to be. Never mind, it works great. Okay, so uh, we have that, basically. And if we run love.exe, woo! Okay, we have. <laughs> Love. Uh, right. I want to play that game. It runs. I know. I wish you could do stuff. But anyway. I'm winning. Um, there's also uh, a bunch of demos <laughs> on the website down at the very bottom. There's like, oh, apparently we should have demos. Right? And there's like a zip file with a bunch of love files uh, that you can check out, uh, including um, one of the things we're not talking about. There's a whole like particle engine like ready to go in love um, that you can use if you want like cool fire and shit like that. Um, but uh, again, we're not talking about this today. Um, and if, if you find any games that you want to like, oh, I want to see how they did this in that game, right? And you see they give you the .love file, just again, unzip change it. the extension from .love.zip and then unzip it and you have the whole source of the game right there. I think you can unzip it straight from um, the .love file. Yeah, you could. Using the, or 7-zip. Yeah, you can do something yeah. like that too. Uh, Bob? Yeah, what version of love is this? Point seven, point oh. Well, then I, would, I retract what I said before. They have point five point oh. But that seems to be a little far back. So. That is a little far back. That's at least two versions back. Um, okay. So uh, remember when I talked about dragging folders and stuff like that on a lot. So for example, this is the this is the complete source code. Uh, in my uh, folder here, I have a main.lua file, uh, and then just some assorted resources. We don't really need slides um, in the game there. Uh, and then if I just literally in Windows at least, if I drag the folder onto the executable and run it. Um, we get nothing. Awesome. Why do we get nothing? <laughs> That's kind of scary. Uh, we're going to roll with it, though. And why do we get nothing? Murphy. We get into your rage. That's why. Because you have to rage quit. Makes me sad. Okay. Well, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully then this, like, works. Um, oh, wait. Did I delete? Yeah, I deleted all the code out there. That's why. Okay. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. So. Uh, actually, here I can do this. Um, maybe. If you're lucky. If it's on the slap top. <laughs> yes, my slap top. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, sorry. It. Very simple game. All we do is we click to start playing, and a uh, little dude rolls forward, and uh, we can jump at the space bar, launch him up in the air, and uh, you have to try and make it to the end here. Nothing too crazy. Wait, can you, are you pushing those blocks? Yeah, you, you can push them along, but if we make it into the green here, woohoo! Yes. Can you go back? All right, great. Okay, so that's what we're building. Very simple. Um, so. I believe this is, yeah, uh, that's not right. This is okay. okay, so in the top code, if you downloaded that, this is basically what you should have. So I included uh, the hump library for you. Uh -huh. Thank you. Uh, that info is there. Um, for more info on stuff that we'll be using, you can check the Love Wiki. Again, it has all the, uh, all the subsystems over here, like physics, graphics, all that jazz. Um, and then also, if you follow the links, uh, to the Hump Library, so if you go like to, let's go back to maybe the wiki, uh, you click on Libraries, click on Hump. Wait, is that? Oh, well, there's the new one called Part of the Library. Great. <laughs> uh, okay. So,
So, uh, his library is on GitHub uh, source. This is on his GitHub page, uh, and it basically has info on each one of the <coughs> things that he gives you. Um, so we'll be using uh, vector and uh, camera in our stuff today. So, um, first, before we run our game, Uh, we're going to drag the main.lua file into our editor here. Ooh, giant text. Um, so just to give you a little hello world, you don't need any of this to do a little hello world. Um, all you need is literally, and I'll prove it to you, I'll just comment all of this out. Is the required like an include for Lua? Uh, or is that just for Lua? Uh, yes, it's, like, it's kind of like include. It's for modules, yeah. So, um, if I literally just write uh, function love.draw and, and I write uh, love.graphics.print, hello CBGD, and we're going to draw that at position 400, 300, uh, then if we run our game, woohoo, we have a game, it's not very exciting. But we have a game. Three lines of code. Three lines of code and we have a game. I'd buy it. Well, how did you set up the window? <laughs> and you, this is what we're raffling off tonight, though. No? How'd you set up the window? Or? You don't have to. That's a great part. Lua does it for you. Or Love does it for you. Well, does it, how did it get the size? OK. So by default, it's 800 by 600. But you can change all of these things using a comp file. So we will do that. We will go into our game folder here. And whoa, where's my phone? There we go. We will make a new file called conf.lua. And in conf.lua, you can set a couple things inside of the comp function. So if we do love.conf basically you're just setting options in this t table that's being passed into the comp function. Uh, so for example, if we set t.title equal to awesome sauce, right? Um, am I going too fast? Am I good? Okay. So if we set that to awesome sauce, right, and we go back here and we run our game, uh, awesome you see the title window is now awesome sauce, right? Um, so you can set stuff that way. Uh, so we could also, uh, for example, set the uh, key dot screen has a lot of different screen options in it. So we could set the width equal to like hundred key dot screen dot height equals fifty. Can you say full screen, but anyway? Yes, you can do full screen. If you drag it into love, woohoo, we have like the tiniest game window ever, right? <laughs> cool. I don't want to buy it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so we'll actually just go ahead and leave these back at 800 by 600, which is the default. Um, these are all, all these uh, configuration possibilities are also enumerated on the wiki, uh, so you can see you can do full screen, you can do all that kind of stuff. Uh, one particular interesting thing you can do is if you're going to be doing a lot of scaling of images, uh, they might look a little nasty unless you turn on anti-aliasing. So if you do uh, t.screen.fsaa, this is going to be how many buffers it uses to do full screen anti-aliasing. <laughs> so by default, this is zero. Um, let's see, I don't know if you can see a difference here with this particular code, but if we run this, right, there's no anti-aliasing. Uh, you really can't tell. <laughs> we don't have anything that would be particularly aliased. Uh, but let's say you set that to three, then uh, you would have three buffers being used for anti-aliasing, which again, you can't. I guess so it's, beautiful. Is there a way to it looks mildly blurrier, I guess. Is there a way to change the text price? size? Yes, there's a whole font subsystem that you can, okay. you can do there. Um, we won't go into that, but yeah, you can totally do fonts. Um, so there, that's there if you want to use it. Um, one other important setting on Windows. Um, so if you're, if you're operating on Mac or uh, Linux, you're probably running it from the command line, so you already have your console there if you want to print stuff, debugging information up to the console. Um, on Windows, applications are either GUI applications or console applications. And so if you launch it as a GUI application, you don't get a console window. Um, so on Windows, if you do set t.console equal to true, it will launch with a console window. So if you just do print statements all over for debugging and stuff, you'll see that in your console window. Um, so you can see now when we launch it, uh, I get, uh, this is a text console window and then my actual game over here, so I can kind of get debugging info. So that's, that's very helpful, especially if you're uh, developing on Windows. Um, okay, let's roll with that. I think that's good enough. Um, moving on to some code. Okay, so if we start with the base code, we'll get rid of this here. And we just look at what we've got. 
That's what we're doing, dear God. Okay. Um, so require. Re uh, require is basically uses Lewis package system to bring in particular packages. Um, or I should say, I should say modules. Um, modules are they're written in a particular way. So if you want to write stuff in other files, you're probably not writing a module. I guess if that makes sense. There's like certain structure you have to conform to for it to be considered a module. Um, so the hump guy has he he has written his code such that it conforms to that. So we can use it like a module. Um, if you're just writing stuff in like another file that you want to include. You can just put other stuff in like my other file.lua, and then you can include it by saying do file my other file. File.lua. And literally, what this is, is it's okay, load that file and go run that file first. Make sense? Okay, so that's basically what I can include, but we don't need to do that. So, one of the things I'm doing here for convenience is I'm creating two uh, local variables to this file called vector and camera and setting those equal to hump.vector and hump.camera. The reason is I don't want to have to type hump.vector.in or hump.camera.in. That's like, I hate all that Java typing, right? Like string.enterprise. Do this. No. Too much, too many dots. So I just create short little aliases uh, to those tables so they're very easier, much easier to type. Uh, you'll see I do this in the love and the draw functions. Like I'll uh, create a local variable in here called gfx, which I do love.graphics. So you could totally type out if you wanted to, love.graphics.draw, or love.graphics.rectangle. I prefer to type gfx.draw, because <laughs> it's shorter and it's faster. But you can do that, you cannot do that, it doesn't matter. Um, so we have our, love, our load function, where we're going to load some stuff. We have our update function. Uh, I gave you a little helper function here. Basically what this does is this abstracts, it, this extracts the bounding box of a rectangle out of the physics system, and then draws a rectangle based on that. Um, so this is this is just a really easy way so we can draw our the walls of our world uh, without getting hung up on on all this like messy drawing code, right? Um, so all it does is it calls the get bounding box method on the it assumes you pass in a table with a body and a shape key, and it goes to the shape key and it grabs the object's bounding box from the physics system, gets those four points of the bounding box, draws a rectangle there. So it works great for the walls. Is it calling easy to explain it right now? Or not? Is the okay? So yes. Um, so imagine object dot. It, it may okay. Let me hold off. Yeah. It may be more. It may be more apparent after we've written some code. Um, okay. So let's go ahead and start by uh, basically setting up our world. Um, mm -hmm. We're going to create some global variables out here. Um, there are no uh, uh, constants in the strictest sense of the word in Lua. Um, just don't modify things you consider to be constant, I guess. <laughs> um, I like to, to put constants in all caps to kind of warn myself, like, don't change these. Um, so, we'll, uh, just for convenience sake, we'll create constants called screen width and screen height. I can't spell. Is there a way to query what the screen width and screen height were set up as? That's a good question. I don't know. Possibly. <laughs> I think we forgot it. Uh, arena height. Uh, almost 400. Okay. So uh, basically all that's saying is we're going to set up the extents of the arena, that kind of like long rectangular hallway that we go through, uh, to be 2400 pixels wide, 400 pixels tall. So the nice thing about this is you never have to worry about trying to figure out clipping regions with your screen or anything like that. It does people who've had to do that, especially with other 2D game stuff, you don't have to worry about that, right? You just draw into the pixel world where you want to go. And if you use Hump's camera system, um, you just move your camera around. You basically consider pixels in the love world to be world coordinates, right? That is your world. And then you can move the camera around um, however you want. So uh, we'll also create some stuff to store the walls. This will be more apparent why. We're going to create a table called walls, and it's going to have some subtables called Left, right, uh, top. Could you have stored those constants in the config and somehow access that config? Possibly. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, that's a good question. I don't know if there's a way to query loves config um, from here. Possibly. Um, okay. Um, Can you know separate them? No. Oh, yes. Thank you. Oh, my God. I, okay. I do this wrong all the time. Thank you. This I is guarantee I'll do that more times tonight. Um, so, yes. Every, every element of your table must be uh, comma-separated, so there we go. That's better. Um, okay, this is good for now. So, 
Uh, when the game loads, one of the things we're going to want to do is start setting up uh, a couple things. So the first thing we'll do, uh, we'll set the background color. That's exciting, right? Uh, so we're going to make it fall into the graphics system. So again, you can type out love.graphics if you want to, but I'm just going to type that to GFF, or GFX. We're going to call set background color 220, uh, 220. Are those set to 256? Uh, yes. So this is, this is basically uh, RGB color values, um, single byte, so 0 to 255. Um, where 0 is uh, black, 255 is white for that particular channel. You can also use an alpha channel um, if you add one more uh, color value to that. So if you wanted to make this, for example, uh, halfway transparent, right, you could put 128 for an alpha value. Um, but it's the background color, so why would we have what's behind the background? <laughs> There's like gears and stuff going on here. That would be awesome. Anyway, um, okay, yes? Do you know if you can use hex for colors? Maybe. You could look in the wiki. <laughs> or you could go to something that you And by the way, all, all of these, like if you're wondering like how do you know to call set background color, it's in the wiki, right? <laughs> Just check the wiki. If you go to the love.graphics module, it'll tell you all of the functions that are in love.graphics. Uh, you'll be like, oh, hey, set background color. That looks like what I want to do, right? Um, okay. So after we set the background color, oh, I'm going to avoid that for now. Uh, let's create a new physics world. So. Um, They'll warn you in the wiki when you go start poking around in the physics section. Um, if you go to physics, where is it? Physics. Uh, they'll give you this nice warning. Uh, love physics is not lightweight, not or even remotely simple to use. It is a 10-ton hammer designed for heavy lifting. If you're just trying to make a character jump around the blocks, then move along, nothing to see here. Okay, so the warning is just, the, the reason that we're using the physics system is I just want to expose you to it, and then uh, it also allows me to dodge the bullet of talking about collision detecting for an hour and a half which is like a whole other topic that could have its own talk. Um, but physics does all that for us, so we just kind of like roll with it. Um, that's cool. Um, but yeah, there is, there is significantly more complexity in setting up a physics system, just because you have to kind of model things a little bit differently than just like having a position and whatnot. So, we have to have a physics world, which is basically uh, the world in which all of our physics objects are going to interact. Uh, so, create a physics world. Um, so, we'll create a new global variable called world, uh, we'll set it to phys.newworld, and then we basically give it the extents, the pixel extents of our physics world. So it's going to be 0, 0, up to uh, arena width and arena height. Uh, once objects go out of the physics world, I'm pretty sure they're deleted, so don't do that it's with the objects you want. Is 0, 0 bottom left? Okay, yes, excellent point. So, screen coordinates. Since we're in, that is not my marker. Um, screen coordinates are just like screen coordinates in every other GUI application. They start up here in the top corner. Okay. They increase uh, to the right in positive x and increase down uh, for positive y. Does that throw anybody for a super big loop? I know like in OpenGL you set it up so that 0, 0 is down here, but. Yeah, but that's just you doing it. Yes. Like most GUI applications, zeros are the top of the corner. Okay. So, um, so we create a physics world. Great. Um, yeah. Uh, so our, our arena height is 400, but our screen height is 600? Sure. Why is that? Because I wanted to. Okay. So that means that if it goes to the top of the screen, then it's going to fall off the planet? Not the top of the screen. So, right. so what we're going to do yeah. is we're going to set up four walls on the outside of our physics world so that things can't go outside of the world. Okay. Does that make sense? I just chose 400 as like an arbitrary height, okay. but yeah. So like if, if you saw in the, um, when, I, when I did the full game, you know, the gray area outside of that, that's outside of our physics world. Okay. And the white rectangle was inside of our physics world. And the red, the, sorry, the black bars were the, uh, the walls. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. So, uh, oh, last thing we want to do, we probably want to have gravity. So this is where the, the colon thing will come in. Set gravity. Uh, zero through uh, So those are the, the x and y components of gravity. Uh, a lot of these numbers are kind of, I don't want to say voodoo, but um, you'll want to tweak a lot of these numbers to kind of get the right feel, right? Because you can to to increase, decrease your gravity, all that kind of stuff. Um, change your gravity to horizontal gravity if you want to, whatever. Um, but um, it's just kind of like, if I just put like a magic number in there, just roll with it because I just kind of tweaked it and that felt right. It's one of those those game things that when you're making a game, you'll be constantly tweaking all of these things to like make it feel right. 
Um, okay, so to answer your question about the colon, um, so when we call fizz.newworld, that is, that is basically giving us back a table. You can think of it like an object at this point. It is a table that was created from some master thing that says this is what a world should look like, right? And that thing that it created is the actual world itself. We could call that like five times and create five physics worlds. Not sure why you'd want to do that, but you could do it. The colon syntax, basically, is a way to avoid... Okay, so... Can you do it without the colon syntax? Okay, so if we did it without the colon syntax, uh, this is what it would look like. It would be... Um, whatever the global world is, I don't know what it's called, but let's say it's capital W world. You, it would be world dot set gravity, our lowercase world, comma, zero, 350. Does that make sense? Well, we have to pass the reference of world to the... Yeah, so this is, this is basically a global table. Think of, think of this as like your class. So each one has a this kind of parameter. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, so this is a way that we that we get around that, right? Um, so when we write it as lowercase world <coughs> colon colon set gravity. Wait, two colon. No, oh, sorry, Col dot dot colon, colon single colon. <laughs> when we write it like this, what we're saying is this specific table should go in for the first argument, and then it uses that first argument in this global function. Okay. Okay. Just use dots when you're talking about functions in specific functions inside of a specific table. Use colons if you're operating on objects. If you're operating on a specific table. Uh, object objects that were created from some class. <laughs> I hate using air quotes around all that, but it's like okay. You'll you'll probably you'll get the hang of it. And a lot of it it's if you imagine. Yes, and the, the thing will tell you, it will give you an error message if you do something horrible, um, like use the wrong dot or the wrong colon, and it's in the wiki too, the wiki uses correct colons and dots, so. Um, okay, so we set gravity on our world. Oh, okay, big block of text incoming. Uh, we're going to define the walls in our world. So, there are, in the physics system, there are two things that you need to define something. You need to define a body and a shape. So what, what is a body? A physics body is basically a, a point mass in the system. So it is a point in the system that has some amount of mass and some ability to rotate. Um, it's, it's moment of inertia. Um, so you need two things. You need a, some mass that exists at a point. And then you need to define the extent or the shape. What does it look like? Is it a rectangle? How big is the rectangle? Is it a circle? How, what's the radius? Does that make sense? So for each thing that we want to inject into the physics world, we need to create a body for it, a point mass, and we need to create a shape that tells it what the extent of that thing looks like. Okay? So we'll create a left wall first and then basically copy pasta all the rest from that. Um, so uh, if you remember, we created these, these subtables. Uh, so walls.left.body equals, uh, we're going to call fizz.newbody. Okay, so the, again, this is all kind of, the parameters are on the wiki, um, if you're wondering what any of this is, but we have to pass into that the world that we're creating it in, uh, and then we pass its position in the world. There's no notion of extent yet because it's just a body. So we're going to put it at um, two pixels in from the left. There's a reason I'm doing that. Uh, and we're going to put it at arena height. Can't spell. Divided by two. Zero, zero. Okay, let's explain what those mean. So, why am I doing this? Um, if we imagine this as our physics world, okay, what I want to do is I want to create four walls, each of which are five pixels skinny, okay, and either the correct height or the correct width of, of our arena. Does that make sense? Okay, so, by positioning this left wall, when I position a body, I need to position it at its center. So this rectangle's center is what I'm specifying when I create the body. So if it's five pixels wide, that would be zero, one, two, 
0, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? So I'm positioning it at 2. Is that okay? Say that again. Okay, so it's 5 pixels wide, right? This wall is 5 pixels wide? Oh, okay. So I'm putting it center at pixel 2 so that it extends 2 pixels out to the left and hits the edge of the physical. Does that make sense? Love doesn't use 1 as its first index. So we're talking about pixels. Pixels can be whatever you want. They can be negatives, zeros, whatever you want. Okay? So, the, then the Y position is just going to be the height of the arena divided by 2. So that's why in the code here, we positioned it at X position of 2, Y position of arena height divided by 2. The zeros, excellent point. So, the first zero is you pass in uh, the mass. So how much, how much does this body weigh? The second zero is its moment of inertia. In other words, how easily does it rotate when I torque it? Okay. Um, if either of those are zero, basically what that means is it's ignored by the physics system. So, when we create a wall with a mass of zero, what that's saying is this will never move. Okay. Which is important, right? If we had our walls of a physics system that just had a really high mass, when you ran into them, you could bump the walls of the world, like, out. <laughs> <laughs> and that would be bad, right? Or if you, if you imagine, right, if you wanted to make a platformer in uh, using the physics system, right? If you jumped on a platform, when you land on it, you push the platform down. If the platform had mass, right? Well, gravity would pull it down. If gravity would, yeah, gravity would drop all your platforms down to the ground. Right? <laughs> Useless, right? So, anything that you want to be a static object that does not move in your world, but still lets things like collide off of it, set its mass to zero. Cool? If you don't want it to rotate, set its uh, moment of inertia to zero, and it will not rotate, it won't work. Cool? Well, if you want to suspend something in the air, but as soon as the character lands on it, it'll move. So you could, there's something in the physics system which we won't talk about called sleeping. You can put objects to sleep, meaning that they won't be affected by the physics system until you wake them up, and then they'll be affected. So you could put it to sleep until you detect a collision, and then you could wake it up. Could you have something uh, not uh, affected by gravity, but something, you know, could be run into and bounce off of other things affected by gravity? Yeah, I mean, that's basically a static body, right? A static body is not affected by gravity because it has a mass. Well, I'm just imagining, I'm imagining you, like, you'll bounce, hit something and it will ricochet around the room while you'll still, and it'll eventually like, slow down, but you'll land on the ground. <laughs> I don't know, it's a very specific use case. Maybe I'll get back yeah. to that. Yeah. You could, okay, yeah. here's, here's something you could do. You could continuously apply a force that opposes gravity. Sure. That might work. <laughs> 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 I took physics all the time. Yes. Could you have negative mass? Like, could you give a balloon negative mass? <laughs> <laughs> I've never tried that. That'd be horrifying if you could. <laughs> well, because I'm just thinking, like, not negative mass as in, like, oh, in real world, it has a negative mass, but I think like, it opposes gravity by, or it anti follows gravity. I see what you're saying. Um, they can make a balloon. I would, do, I would try and do that using forces instead of, yeah. instead of masses. Um, yeah, because there's no, there's no notion of density, right? Um, mass is totally dependent on density, right? So that's the whole reason a balloon floats, not because it has no mass or has a negative mass, right? It's just less dense than air. Um, and there's no notion of density, so yeah. This is this is a relatively simple physics system. It's not like well, that's we won't we won't be modeling 2012 or anything like destruction of LA using. I will. Love. Okay. Okay. So if that's okay with everyone, we, we understand that when we specify a body, we specify the center of the body. That's what I want to get across. Is that okay? Okay. So now we need to say how big is this? Like what are the extents of this, right? So we're going to say walls dot left dot shape. <laughs> we're going to create a new rectangle shape from our physics system. <laughs> and into that, uh, we're going to attach the shape to its body. So we pass on its body. Uh, now we can set an <laughs> x and y offs uh, an x and y offset. You probably don't want to do this for anything because then its extents don't you can basically set an x and y offset if you don't want the mass to be at the center of the shape. Does that make sense? Yeah. So for example, I could create, in this case, we're all creating rectangles and circles. 
that have their point mass at the center of the rectangle. If you specify an offset on the shape, you could create a rectangle that has a point mass there. So when it torques, it's going to torque around here, not around the center. So it wouldn't spin circularly. It would like flop. As it, uh, you could have like a bow that turns more towards the front or something like that. Yeah. So for example, you could uh, you could like if you're going to make like buses or something, right? You could adjust the center of mass of the bus so it's more likely to tip over or something. Like that. Um, you could tweak stuff that way. But for all of our objects, they're just going to have an uh, x and y offset of zero because we want it to be centered. Um, lastly, we need to specify the width and the height. So again, our left wall is going to be five pixels wide, and it's going to be arena height counts. Arena height pixels tall. Cool. Uh, and lastly, what is that last parameter? I'm curious. I don't know what that is. Uh, let's look it up in the wiki. Uh, new. You can do joins and all sorts of crazy stuff. Um, we're not going to. <laughs> New rectangle shape. Uh, angle. Oh, initial angle. There is no initial angle for us. It's zero. Uh, great. Okay. So, we now have the left walls defined. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy pasta these. And I did that one too many times. Okay. So we're going to do left. Right, top. Uh, we're probably going to go over. What time were we supposed to be out here? To eight. <laughs> I'm estimating eight thirty. You're welcome to leave if you have to leave. I will continue having. Can have to yeah, if someone comes in, we'll deal with it. But we have BSG at nine, so we can't stay in that. Right. Sorry, Battlestar Galactica's report. Okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So something important. Yes. Is that on the right side, or are they all supposed to? Yes, thank you. Okay, I was just going to bring that up. Okay, I'm sorry. No, 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 thank you. Okay, Interactivity is fantastic. Okay, so yes, we do need to then change these to their respective things, because right now all of these shapes reference the left body. That would be bad. So, we need to change these so that they reference their respective uh, bodies. Cool? So now we have four unique shapes in our physics system that all completely overlap. That's not very useful. So, uh, let's figure out the positions of each of these other walls. So the what would be the x and y position for the right body? Anyone want to guess? Uh, arena width minus 2? Yes. Okay. So I'll just write that as, we'll write that in code in a minute. But arena width minus 2 would be the x position, y position. The height divided by 2. Uh -huh. Height divided by 2. I remember graphic. I remember right. 471. Awesome. Uh, now the top wall. What would its exposition be? No. Exposition. Sorry. Exposition. Arena. Or width divided oh, by two. Width. Arena width divided by two. Yes. And its y position. Two. Yes, because remember zero zero is up here. <laughs> yes. Okay. And last at the bottom. Again, width divided by two. Divided by two, right? No surprise there. And? Height minus two. Arena height minus two, yeah. Yes? Is there some sort of IDE that gives you the function definitions when you like highlight? Uh, I, I don't, there is it's so book. new and so, I don't think I would so. not be surprised. What, what do you mean? It's like, 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 Equip I'm sure it did if you had the Lua file. I think that all depends on how you set up your ID. Because like right now, for example, I don't have any of these Lua files. They've all been compiled and shoved into the executable. So I don't have those Lua files for my ID to reference. Uh, but, yeah. Text me, does it? Uh, yeah, I mean, somebody was going to make a text my phone. Okay. <laughs> I have text me here. It's, I, it's being retarded. But okay. Did you so, download the Lua bundle? <laughs> I tried getting it. Yeah, Nick, will, Nick will all make us a Lua Love bundle before Game Jam. It's already made. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't no, be clips for it. text my users. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nick from, from the future yeah. wrote it. <laughs> Maybe what? It has the docs in it too. I didn't make it. Okay, there we go. Um, <laughs> I, think, I think some of the Love developers use text messages, by the way. Nick, um, okay, Nick. so let's talk about extents now, right? So extents involve the shape. So, um, Actually, that's really easy. Well, it's really easy. So if you want, okay. 
So, uh, let's do the body again. So, uh, the right body was. Somebody help me because I have to look at the Height minus right. two. Arena. With minus two. Uh, yeah, that's right. Arena with minus two. And, oh, sorry. That's the. Uh, yeah. That's the exposition, sorry. Okay. That's still height divided by two. Yeah, that was Yeah, sorry. Okay. Okay, and then the uh, top body, its exposition was arena width divided by two. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Two. Right? Yeah. Uh, just yes. 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 Uh, this one was arena height minus two, right? Mm -hmm. For its y position, and its exposition was arena width divided by two. Okay. Cool. So we have these four bodies. Hopefully they're positioned correctly, but without being able to see them, we really have no idea. So we need to change the shapes so that the bottom and top are. Oh yes, 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 yes. Thank you, thank you. We need to change the shape. So the shape, the right side is exactly the same shape, right? It's five pixels wide, arena height tall. The um, this is the top shape. So these should be the exact opposite, right? This should be arena width wide and five pixels tall. Oops. Uh oh. Oh no, it's too hot. <laughs> Hopefully not. Too much love. Too much love. Too much awesome. Too, too much love. <laughs> <laughs> too much love is being needed in the truth. Okay. Good. Well, it's warming up. So. It's warming up. Wait, it's not supposed to be warming up. It's supposed to be cooling down. Cooling down. Ooh. Well, I turned it back on, so it's warming back up. <laughs> it's Stupid warming back up from overheating. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hopefully it'll turn back on. I'm hesitant to continue writing code until it's in production. Is it turning on? I don't know. The light's not on, so I'm going to push on again. We're going to make you an iPhone app where you can scan the whiteboard and it'll compile your code and tell you where your errors are. Took that for a Big Bang Theory. <laughs> they did that on the so it's back on the Big Bang Yeah. Different situations. Is it not turning on? It's not turning back on. Can you push the button on it? Like, force it? But it's actually the real. This is not the future, this is the present. Push power button. Oh, power light's blinking. Is that power light blinking? No. Uh, it's still blinking. What? I saw something flash. I saw something flash too. So they turn nice and they push the power button over here. I see it. Yeah, it's coming back. Okay. We're going to cause like the like, $5,000 moment. I know. I know. CPGD, there goes all our funding for next year. So I'm going to be president. Holy shit. Okay, cool. We're back. Awesome. Okay, so we, we have no way of visualizing at this point whether or not that's right. So that's why I gave you a helper function. Uh, does anyone not have this helper function because you didn't download the code? No, you. Okay, great. So, uh, the really easy way we can do this then is we can go to our draw function and as I am moving through our code, we will draw our walls. Oh, the tab draw jacked up. That's okay. Um, it doesn't matter a little bit. So, we'll call uh, gfx. I'm guessing color. new lines matter though. <laughs> Uh, so we'll call GFX set color. This is basically going to change whatever the current color that we're drawing with is. So after this point, whether we draw rectangles, circles, lines, whatever, even images, uh, they will be all tinted this color. So we should set the color beforehand. We should set it to black so that our walls. Is there clear? Hmm? Can you do clear if you want the images to display like how they are? Uh, so just do white if you want okay. your images to display correctly. Okay. Yeah. Because basically white is no tint. Anyway, um, it opens you up weird. Okay. So, we call set color, and then we can just call draw simple rect. And the way the simple rect is set up, if we just pass in each of those walls, it will extract the proper information and do the love what call. What would this look like in a for the loop? Like going through all the walls? Would you use the generic for the loop? Yeah, let's do that, actually. Okay, let's try that. Um, this is dangerous. Uh, for... Uh, <laughs> Keys values. Yeah, okay, so for key, com uh, key comma value in pairs, walls, walls do. And then we would want to call v, draw simple, simple rec of v. Call on v. Believe that's right? 
Yeah. We'll, we'll find out. We'll... Okay. So if we did that. If you wanted something to be an image to be partially transparent, could you set the alpha value in the Yes, in fact, if you load, if you load, we'll see, um, if you load a PNG that has a transparent background, get the transparency is handled for you automatically. Okay. Yep. When I meant in the, you said set color, could tint stuff, could you tint it transparent? Uh, yeah, you can set the alpha. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so we'll drag it into the game. And it's not very interesting because you can't move around, but you can see, uh, starting at zero, 0, there, we have a top wall, we have a left wall, we have a bottom wall, and we can't see our right wall because it's like 2,400 pixels off the side of the screen. But we have it. Yeah. So I'm getting uh, an error. Yeah, you'll get a nice little blue screen. Like, oh. Yes. Uh, can you show the, uh, the place where you see the setup? Yeah. Uh, the wall? Yes. Yeah, what does the error say? It says uh, incorrect parameter type expected world, and that is on. Uh, Uh, and any of the new bodies. Which line? Thirty-four for me, but it's uh, walls that left that shape. Can you find it? It's yeah. that dot body. That gets yeah, you should reference the body you just created. Okay, so this should be that new rectangle shape. Yeah. Anybody else getting errors? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm getting a problem where I can't find pump, and so how do I put? Into the, um, uh, did you download the code from the website? The heart Sorry, uh, this? Uh, no. That might be why. Because um, when, you, when you use modules by using like requires, there's a very specific set of paths it will check for modules. And if it can't find it, then it may not happen. But if you unzip it into your game directory, so like right here, in my game directory, I have a folder called pump, and I have everything in there, then it should work. Hopefully. You can also download that code and then... So then it's set up for you. Yeah, it's, it, should be, it should work. Uh, okay. So, yeah, again, when we run it... Uh, get the plus one out of the way here. Um, cool, we have our world. Uh, let's add one more feature to that. Let's add it so uh, we draw the background. Oh, I should mention, there is no concept of Z-ordering in mm. love. Okay. Um, because it's all in 2D. So in other words, if you want something to appear behind something else, you need to draw it first. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you need to draw it and then draw the thing that's in front. You can't like painterly give rendering. Them, yes, painterly rendering. You, you can't give them Z values and then let Lua or let Love figure out which one you want. Painter's algorithm. Yeah. Not painterly. Mm -hmm. Which pairs? Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, what order does that look at? It, okay. Uh, Kind of yes. Don't don't rely on any particular order. Which you shouldn't with an iterator anyway, right? Because iterators inherently say you don't care about the order. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So let's also draw. Uh, we'll set the. Uh, let's say draw arena, uh, and we'll set the color to white. That's you. Not close paren. And we will uh, draw a rectangle. Um, you can draw rectangles either outlined or filled. So we're going to draw a filled rectangle. Should and we're going to. Should you be doing this in draw simply? You should. Oh my god, what am I doing? Thank you. This is horrible. In fact, it didn't fit. Well, let's go down to draw. You can't draw in look. Okay, so before we, before we draw, the walls. Let's draw the background. So we're going to draw um, arena width um, and arena height. Uh, sorry. When you draw a rectangle, it's at position zero zero, and then you draw a particular width and a particular height. So that should give us a nice white background. I'll go back to that code in a second. Sorry. Uh, and then yeah, so we can see now our world is in white. Make sense? Okay, and then the last thing we're going to do, um, which you won't be able to see yet because you can't go to the right yet, um, is we're going to draw a little wind zone. So I, I don't remember if uh, when you saw me playing before, the guy ran around until he got into that kind of green area, and then he won. So we're going to draw that so the player knows, hey, this is where you win, right? Um, so we're going to call set color. Uh, we're going to draw it with. 
uh, in green. And we're going to call it with an alpha of 100, so it won't be complete, completely solid green. It'll be uh, kind of transparent green. Um, and then again, we'll call it a rectangle. We'll draw a filled rectangle. Uh, we're going to draw it from the width of the arena minus 150, zero, to with a width of 150 in the arena height. Okay, so just to make sure that we all understand that, basically what we're doing is we want to draw a little green rectangle here at the end to say, hey, you've made it to the end of the maze. Okay, um, so it's x and y position right here are going to be the width of the arena, right, width minus uh, 150 pixels, just 150 is a general offset, uh, zero, and it's width will be 150, and its height uh, will be the arena height. So that's what I was thinking about. Any questions? OK. So I wouldn't show you that, but we can't see it yet. So not that interesting. OK. So let's put a little guy in the world. So first thing we need to do is we need to create one. So let's create our ball. So um, in this case, basically what I'm doing is uh, the image that we're going to load is 50 pic uh, 100 by 100 pixels. So if you consider that a circle, centered at the center of that image, it would have a radius of 50. Yeah. Um, so I'm just setting a radius there just for uh, convenience for later. Um, now. Let's go ahead, we need to do a couple things here. We need to not only create a physics representation of the ball, so the physics world knows uh, what's up, but we also need to load an image for it. So, first thing we'll load the image. So we'll say ball.image is graphics.new image. Did you get the ball of field? And uh, you notice in our source code directory here, we have ball.png. It's just a little PNG image with a transparent background. Um, and Lua will handle that transparency, by the way. So if you have a transparent PNG, you don't have to worry about setting up alpha channels or anything. It's all handled for you. Um, so we create a new image from that. Uh, we need to find its physics body. So we need to do phys.newbody in the world. Uh, we'll have it start off at two times the ball's radius the x uh, plane, and then we'll have it start off halfway in the arena the plane. Now, we need to give it mass and a moment of inertia, because we want it to not only move throughout the world, but we want it to twist as it hits things and whatnot. So we're going to give it a mass of 10 and a moment of inertia of 15. Again, you can just kind of tweak these values whatever you want. Um, then we'll create a shape for it is that new circle shape this time. Um, we're going to hook it up to the body. Uh, again, uh, no offset. We want the center of mass at the center, and it has a radius of all that radius. The last thing we're going to do, and I'll, I'll actually, let's draw it before I show you the last part. Sorry, is it, everybody got that okay? Um, can you show where you create the ball table? Yes, sorry, that was... Yeah, it's just a, a table with a. Uh, well, you don't um, have a dot. You gave you set its dot image without. Yep. So it would create a dot image in mm -hmm. that table. Yep, it's going to create image. the image key. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Cool. Okay, so actually, one thing I should mention probably. One of the most common errors you will probably see in Lua is try to index a nil value. Basically what that means is you try to index a table with an index of nil. Um, so for example, let's say I, so let's, let's actually, let's run this. It should execute. Yeah, okay, doesn't do anything interesting. Um, if, let's say I don't declare the ball table, right? So we comment that out. We should now get an error. Yeah, cool. <coughs> Attempt to index global ball a nil value. What does that mean? Well, that means if we go down to the first time we used ball, right, we started indexing it. The problem is ball doesn't exist yet. 
So it doesn't know it's a table. It's nil, right? It so say, it doesn't know if you can index it or not. So it can't just say it's not anything else? So it exactly. Be a table. It will not create the table on the fly. So that's why, for example, a, a simple way to get around this would be just to say ball equals empty table. Because now it's not nil anymore. It's an empty table. Well, this would, would this still fail because you access ball dot radius? Yes, this would still fail because radius doesn't exist. But point being, if you're going to use a table, you have to tell it it's a table before you start indexing it because it won't create the table on the fly. Does that make sense? Okay. So let's go back. Let's uncomment that. Okay, how much math can we do with the ball? Uh, I think we give it 10. A mass of 10 and a moment of inertia of 15. Uh, they're all modeled in physical units. I just don't have them off the top of my head. Physics yeah. units. Yeah. Physics units. Uh, okay. Few units. Few <laughs> units. <laughs> units. Awesome. Um, okay. So let's draw it. So. So for this, what we actually want to do is we want to extract its position and its rotation out of the physics system so that our graphics representation matches what the physics system is thinking, right? Um, this can be a, a frequent issue. If you forget to, to pull those values out of the physics system, where the physics system thinks the object is and where you see it are two different things, which would be bad. That'd be very scary um, and not very fun to debug. So, um, where? There it is. Okay, sorry. So uh, we're going to call set color again, just to ensure that we're back at white. Otherwise, it will uh, again tint the image with a particular color. And then we're going to call graphics dot draw. The first object is anything that can be drawn. So in this case, it's ball dot image, which we just loaded, right? Because that's uh, something that can be drawn. Uh, then we it takes in its x and y position. So we're going to call ball dot body. So we want to get the physics body, and we're going to call colon get x. That'll get its x position out of the physics body. Same thing for the y. We're going to call ball dot body colon get y. The next argument is the rotation that we want to draw it with. So again, we need to extract this from the physics system with ball dot body get angle. That'll get our rotation for us. The next two arguments are uh, the scale. Um, so you can scale images if you want. The x and y scale are both going to be 1 for us because we don't want to zoom it in or, or shrink it. We just want to draw it at regular size. Uh, lastly, the last is an x and y offset for the image. We do need to use an x and y offset because, remember for our ball, right? the physics system is modeling it as a point mass with its center of mass here. Right? The image for our ball is a square image of the same size, actually I should just draw this on top here. Our uh, square image of the same size, but the origin of an image, right, of a rectangle, is up here at zero, zero, right? So if we draw the image without an offset, right, it will draw the image right there. And so as your ball rotates, what will happen is it will be like, foom, 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 right? It will look really awkward. And you'll be like, this is not a rolling ball. <laughs> okay. Because your, because your, your center of the image and the center of what the physics system is seeing are, are not lined up. So we need to draw it with this x offset. Radius. And this y offset, which is? The radius. The radius. Woohoo. And gave it away. <laughs> Sorry, Bob. It's okay. In both the x and y positions. Uh, or back both x and y directions, the offset is the radius. Um, why is the offset going the opposite direction of um, like the coordinates? Um, because they they assume that the offsets will be going in that direction. <laughs> it is because it is. It is because it is. They made that design decision. Yes. Yep. More question. <laughs> Okay, so with any luck, uh, we should be able to see our ball. Yeah, there's our ball. Why isn't gravity? Why anything? isn't gravity pulling it down? Because yeah, you didn't tell it to. It's shitty, shitty physics, huh? Uh, okay, uh, updating it? exactly. We're not updating anything, right? 
Our update is empty. We're not doing anything. Okay. Um, Let's fix that. To the shape of the ball. Right? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. There you go. So these are these are again the offsets for the shape, and then the radius for a certain shape. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So if we want anything to happen, we need to update our world. The nice thing is, since the physics system is handling everything, we can just call world update done. <laughs> right? We will add eventually more stuff to the to update, but for right now, literally all we want to do is tell the whole physics system, please update things based on how much time has passed. Cool? And with that little one-line addition, we should be able to see uh, the console blocked it, but it fell. Turn off the console. Yeah, let me go ahead and shut that off for a moment. Ah. Woohoo! <laughs> awesome, okay. Is there a way to specify elasticity or something? Yes, okay, that's an excellent, that's exactly what I was going to bring up before we got sidetracked drawing the ball. It kind of sucks because the ball falls like a bag of sand, right? And that's not a very interesting ball. It'd be more interesting if it could bounce a little bit, right? So, to change the bag of sandness, in, <laughs> in physics that's called a restitution, okay? So, I think it's about that right. We're going to give it a restitution of 0.5. Um, this is basically a value between 0 and 1, where 0 would be like a complete bag of sand that hits the ground and goes nowhere no matter how fast it hits the ground, right? Um, a restitution of one would be like a perfectly elastic collision, like a pool ball that like, go, like, will travel back exactly as far as it started when it hit something. So there's no energy loss. Does that make sense? So it's basically energy loss when the shape flies. Um, no, oh, what did I do just there? Sorry, that is very wrong. Ball dot shape oh my God. set restitution. That should be correct. Restitution of one is hilarious. <laughs> How is yes, because no energy is ever lost. It's like flubber. <laughs> okay, so if we run with the 0.5, uh, there we go. We get a little bit of bounce going on, right? And since Andrew is having fun over there, we'll show everybody. We set the restitution of one, right? Um, Two. Yes, okay. So <laughs> setting setting what what would a restitution of over one do? It, it adds energy to the system. Oh, right? It's gonna be like lumber. That's horrible. Right? So if we add it to one, literally, an object gets more energy by colliding with them. <laughs> so this is this is horrific. Right? Because this is not bounded anymore. <laughs> no, I energy. I bounced off a the corner and I'm flying there, on the rest of it. Andrew just, he fell and won the game. <laughs> I bounced off a corner and it went shooting across the level. And it bounced back. Okay, so, you get the idea. Um, and there's there are a couple other properties you can set. Um, set back to um, I think, uh, if you're, um, if you have no gravity in your system, so you're doing like modeling like an air hockey table, uh, you can set things I think called like linear damping and uh, angular damping, and so those like if you had complete rest or a restitution of one and you had no gravity, right? Um, things would just fly around forever. But you could actually set linear dampening and angular damping to bleed that off, so that it just kind of coasts to a stop a little bit to kind of like model friction like on air hockey table if you want to. So see. instead of losing energy when it hits stuff, it loses energy when it's not hitting stuff. Exactly. Exactly. So. Uh, there we go. Okay, we got set restitution. Moving on. So, let's add the ability to jump, right? Because right now, it's not very interesting that we run it, and it just kind of like plop, and it's like, <laughs> game over! Woo! <-hoo. laughs> no, that's not interesting. Okay, so let's add the ability to jump. We'll do that by hooking... Let me do it somewhere. Yes. Uh, love.keypressed. And this takes in key and Unicode. If for some reason you're using a Unicode keyboard and you want to make like N tilde jump, you could do that. But we're not. So, in here, we basically want to say if Q 
key is equal to space. If key is equal to space, we will, uh, since again, since we're modeling everything with physics, we need to get into jump. How can we jump? Okay, well there's two ways you can affect bodies in the physics system. You can apply a force, and you can apply an impulse. So if you've taken physics, you may have a notion of what that is. So uh, a force is basically, you can imagine those like thrusters. It's, a, it's a, something that's designed to be applied over time, right? Um, so if you're in a spaceship, right, and you want to go some direction, you'd have to turn on your thrusters for a while to get going in that <coughs> That's a force. An impulse is like an immediate force, okay? It's like being punched, and then you react to that, okay? So for jumping, we don't really want to apply a force because that'd be like we're lifting off with kind of jet boosters. It'd be like, oh. Right? That's not really what we want. We really want to apply an impulse like someone had punched our character and he shoots up in the air for a while. Okay? So we're going to apply an impulse. So we're going to call ball.body. We're going to apply an impulse. Uh, the impulse takes four arguments. We're only going to give it two. The, the two that we're going to give it are the x and y components of that impulse. So we're going to give it an impulse of zero in the x direction and 280 in the y direction. Negative? Uh, strange. Apparently not negative. Don't know why. Okay. <laughs> not sure. That's interesting. Um, okay. So if we, we want to apply an impulse to get him to jump. Now, there's a big flaw with what we just wrote. Anybody know what it should be? Huh? Equals instead of equals equals? That's a syntax error, yes. <laughs> Anything other than syntax errors. There's a logical problem with what we just wrote from a gameplay perspective. Is that you can jump as often as you want, right? You can double, triple, bazillion jump if you want to by just going keep applying impulses. We probably don't want to do that. So we'll check and make sure that he's near the ground. Base has a jetpack. <laughs> we'll, we'll, check, we'll check and make sure he's near the ground. Now, this also has a bug in it, but it's one we'll just kind of brush under the rug and I'll leave that as an exercise to the reader if you want to fix this bug. Um, you can still hit jump a bunch of times and get a bunch of... So, oh, wait. Yes. I, so I tried it with 280 and I tried it with negative 280. And 280, it looks like it's jamming into the floor and then using the facts. And negative 280 goes actually up into the air. Okay, I think that's a bug with my original game then. Let's try negative 280. <laughs> That's probably right. <laughs> yeah, because you're not losing anything. Oh, you're not losing around five. Yeah. Yeah. When you when you oh, hit the okay. you pick a number then. What's a good number? One forty. Negative one forty. Negative one forty. Yeah. Okay. Let's do that then. Cool. Thank you. This is why coding. This is like more than pair programming. This is like forty programming. This is awesome. Okay. So we're going to also do a check and see if the player is near the ground. What do, what do I mean by near the ground? So let's say if... Uh, does key press and you have key capitalized? No. Oh. Doesn't need to be. Low case is fine. Um, uh, we'll do ball.body. We're going to get its y position. If the y position is greater than arena height minus ball.radius minus 20. How do we get that? So, we want to only allow the player to jump if they're close to the ground. Okay, so if this is the ground, this is located at arena height, right? The ball is modeled at the center of the ball, so the closest the ball can ever get to the ground is, right, if you imagine the ball here, the closest it can ever get right here is arena height minus the ball radius, right? And that would be painful to jump because it means you would have to be sitting exactly on the ground. There's no leeway. You must be on the ground. Even if you miss it by a fraction of an instant, you're not going to get it. So we give them a buffer right here of 20 pixels, where if you're within 20 pixels of the ground, we let you jump. Okay? There's a logical flaw with this. What is it? You can spam jump before you get more than... You could do that. You could do that. You hold down the space bar and you're always jumping as soon as you get within 20 pixels? Not in this case, because we're actually detecting only when the key is pressed. You have to actually release it and press it again to get another jump. Is there a key hold? Let me give you a hint. Remember what the game looked like, right? We had boxes in here. You had to jump over? 
you can't jump once you're on the box. You can't jump off a box. Yes. You can't jump off a box. Because if you're sitting on top of a box, you're not within 20 pixels of the ground. Oh, no, we're just going to call that part of the game. Okay, you can only <laughs> jump from the ground. Um, if you want to change that, you can figure it out. Um, so, uh, with that modification, if we run it, oops. Okay, we should be able to hit the space, and we shoot up in the air. And we can jump. Cool, okay. So you can start jumping twice higher, before higher, you get higher, away from the ground. ground. You can. You can. Depending on when you can jump. We'll call that a V jump. Okay. <laughs> so, we can jump. Great. Now, it'd be more exciting if our guy moved down the side of the hallway. Right? In the original game, you don't have any control over him moving. He just moves. And all you do is hit space. So, to make him move, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the update function. And before we update the physics, that's not how you spell it. Okay. Before we update the physics, we're going to call. <clears throat> we're going to apply a force to the body. So in this case, we do want kind of a continuous, if you imagine basically he had thrusters on that were pushing him in the x direction. That is kind of what we want in this case. So we're going to call apply force on the ball. Um, we're going to do this. Remember when I said your stuff should always be scaled based to real world time? This is real world time, right? So this is applying a force, force of 1,000 units per second. Okay. So this doesn't, up if we didn't scale it by <coughs> time, how much force we apply would depend on how fast we can call update, right? If we just set this to be 1,000, if we have a really fast computer that can call update really fast, it applies the force of a thousand more times than it does if we apply a force at a slower rate. Does that make sense? So we're scaling it by real world time. So we apply a thousand units of force per second. Cool? Okay, so if we run it now, woohoo! He gets an automatic force applied, but then he rolls right off and we can't see where he went. Great. Okay. We need a camera, yes, we need a camera. So, we have camera, the camera class imported, but we have not created one. So, let's make a camera. So in our load function here, doesn't really matter where, let's make a camera. So we'll make it using a global variable called cam. We're gonna call camera.new. That will give us a new camera. We need to give it a vector of the location that we want it to be looking at. So let's have it start looking at screen width, divided by four, arena width, divided by three. Huh? Where is screen width? Screen width was defined up here. So we want it, we want it to start looking at, you, you don't have to do it that way. Um, I just did. You don't have to do it that way. The camera's going to move anyway, so this is like only going to be held for like a fraction of a second. But, okay, so we create a new camera. Uh, that value is not used anymore. Oh, neither of those values are going to be anymore. Why are those still in the source code? Get out. Okay. Cool, we create a new camera. Now, let's run the game. Well, actually, let's not, because we don't do anything yet. Right? There's no, it doesn't know about the camera at all. So, if you use the home camera, there are two functions that are very important for when you draw things. Um, Pre-draw and post-draw. Okay. So, where's our drawing stuff? Love that draw. Great. Okay. So, pre-draw and post-draw. So, what we want to do here is we want to wrap. Uh, We want to wrap our world drawing code in pre-draw and post-draw. Okay. What does this do? So, anything that is drawn between cam pre -draw and, or cam pre -draw and camera post-draw, that will be translated with respect to where the camera is in the world. Okay. So, basically think of it like this. There's usually two things you want to draw in a game. Things that are in the world, and things that are on the screen. 
right? So if we want to draw the world, right? We want to draw the world. If we want to draw a little high score box or something right up here, right? Or uh, the number of points the player has, right? These we want to draw with respect to the screen, not the world, right? Because these aren't actually things that float through the world, right? They're just they're just <coughs> like cut. They're overlay on the screen. So again, you have pre-draw and you call post-draw. You draw your world in here. Anything you draw after this will use the screen. So for example, if you treat all your pixels as world coordinates, right? So we have so far, we've defined this arena in some pixel coordinates, right? That's in our world. We want to draw everything in the world here, and then when we draw like the U win text at the end, we want that to stay centered in, in the middle. So we call post draw to stop drawing the world, and then we draw whatever we want directly to the screen coordinates. Does that kind of make sense? So, we, we call pre-draw and post-draw. Last thing we need to do is we need to have our camera follow our player. So we can do this using update. Um, where is that? Yes, okay. <coughs> Actually, we'll update the camera after we update the physics. So, uh, we call cam.position. We're going to set it to a new vector. The vector is going to be the x coordinate of the ball, which we will get out of the physics system, and the y coordinate, which we'll get out of the physics system. If we're going to subtract 100 off the y coordinate so that the ball is not centered in the view, but rather the ball is a little bit down, we can see more above the ball than, than below. Does that make sense? We're just shifting it a little bit. So, with that, we should now have something. Wait, why is that update not drawn? Because we're wanting to update the camera position. So um, we could do it in the draw in this case. But sometimes you'll want your camera to move at a fixed speed, which should be done with relation to real world time. Okay. Does that make sense? Deal. So uh, yeah. We're gonna we're basically gonna consider our camera just like all the other stuff in our world. Okay, so if we draw that changes dot text, <laughs> now our camera follows our little dude, and if we jump, he jumps. Cool. We are starting to run out of time, so fast. Part two online. Well, I'm just saying, there's, there's honestly not a whole lot of code. Like, the, first of all, the code is on, the full source code is on GitHub. Um, and honestly, we've done probably 80% of it. Part. Yeah, we've done 80% of it at this point. Um, literally, all the rest of the game is, is adding some boxes for you to, like, jump over, um, which are just new physics objects. And then um, setting up a basic state system so that when you start the game, you have to click the mouse before the game starts running. Then the game starts running. And then when you make it into the final zone, you win, and it stops shooting forward, and you have to click again just to play the game again. That's that's really the only code that's left. Although there's like a wall, another wall of text for all those blocks that we put in the physics system. So I don't know. Is everyone cool with leaving it here? Is that I don't want to belabor it. <laughs> Source code's online. It's hopefully they give you an idea of how simple it is to like how many lines have we written. So far, like 100 maybe? Yeah, 105 lines of little code. And we have the beginnings of an interesting game, right? And we did this in an hour, roughly. And you have 48 during Game Jam? You can make a game 40 time, 48 times this awesome. <laughs> that would make 48 of them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can make 48 games of this caliber. But that's assuming you have a one person team. I know. You 200. 200 games. Oh my god. Okay. So hopefully they give you an idea. Um, Definitely check out the wiki for any, like, we didn't cover music or sound at all, that's a huge part, uh, but again, it's super simple in love. We didn't, you can use joysticks, I think you, know, you plug in an X360, Xbox 360 controller or a gamepad or yeah. something, you can use a gamepad with love. PDR pad. Um, you could do, check out the, um, there's a swipe library. library. Yeah, there's a gestures library, I think. Yes, there is. Uh, if the you have like, a tablet or something that you want to do with it. Yep, it's the swingers library. The swingers library. It works with the mouse, too, you were just playing with it back here. Oh, nice. 
Um, the <laughs> network <laughs> yeah, we were playing with the swingers back. Here. I'm not. I'm not certain how well the networking library lube is documented, but it exists. <laughs> so if you want to do something with that, it's you probably should want to check it out. But anyway, hopefully that gives you an idea of what's available, what you might want to check out in the upcoming week to get ready for Game Jam. And that's all that's you guys. Thanks for coming. Appreciate it. Hope Thanks, guys. Hey, uh, before you guys head out, I just want to take a quick poll. So, um, how many of you guys felt that this was, awesome. that this may have changed your view on what you're going to do at Game Jam? Anybody actually interested in this? Yes. Very good, very good. Um, would you guys like to see more of this kind of stuff? Yes. yes. Like yes. workshops? Yes. Like this. All right, very cool. Just well done. Let me when I should bring my laptop. Yeah. Yeah. Talks yeah. Stuff. Seriously, are we getting power bars for a talk like this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like a backpack full of power strips. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I know. Power strips. Oh my god. Chris Gibson. You're sitting in here. I sent you an email that uh, Nat sent me. He showed me how to. You have to be careful. Your promotional install. posters are going to scare everyone away from the game jam. No, the. Yeah. What did they call? Wait, what? has anyone ever seen it? Oh, the, oh, the, yeah. first, the first one makes it look like he's going to hurt you if you don't sign up for the yeah, game jam. Yeah, no, no, that's the like, sad one. That's the sad one. It's like. The first one. This is going to go. We're going to run out of funding. That was the like, anger like, one. The uh, second uh, one The second one made it seem like. These are hilarious. Yeah, you were just. Yeah. Oh, come, on, come on, come on, Google. Inter-chan. Inter-chan only been around for two years. Google, Inter-chan is too cool to be Googled. Yeah, this is the third year. Clark has only been around for one year. So, what? It's like last year. It was two years ago. Seriously, Bob? Matus. Decided to die. There you go. Join the Developers Association. Student membership. And I just pressed this button to stop, right?